A month before her death, Catherine of Aragon mustered the strength to write Henry VIII one final letter where she reiterated her love for him. Despite her treatment, she wrote to Henry, her most dear lord, king and husband, and sought to express her forgiveness. Henry's first wife had fallen out of favor as she had only given him a daughter, Mary, having lost at least five children. Instead, he set his sights on her young and captivating lady-in-waiting, and Boleyn. Henry sought to prove their marriage was invalid and she was then dismissed from court and denied any contact with her only child. Yet, Catherine remained loving and defiant of her claim to the throne in what has been described as one of the most moving farewells in the English language. Catherine spent the final few years of her life estranged from Henry at Kimbleton Castle, Cambridgeshire, suffering from cancer, according to Giles Tremlett's 2010 biography Catherine of Aragon, Henry's Spanish Queen. As the hour of her death drew near, she wrote, The tender love I owe thou force of me, my case being such, to commend myself to thou and to put thou in remembrance with a few words of the health and safeguard of thine soul. The then 50-year-old wrote that she had forgiven him for the events of the previous years. She continued, For my part, I pardon thou everything, and I desire to devoutly pray to God that he will pardon thou also. Catherine also begged Henry to be a good father to Mary, who Henry later declared was illegitimate and removed from the line of succession, and requested that he take care of her maids. But she then finished the letter by reiterating her love for him, concluding finally her vow that her eyes desire him above all things. While some biographers have questioned the letter's authenticity, with Mr. Tremlett describing it as certainly fictitious, it has been included in several other biographies, with historian Linda Porter writing that Catherine had it dictated. Ms. Porter, writing in her 2007 book Mary Tudor, The First Queen, noted the poignancy of Catherine's letter. She wrote, in its dignified pathos and remembrance of a great and, for the writer, enduring love, it is one of the most moving farewells in the English language. Don't miss. And Bolin and Catherine of Aragon's rivalry debunked in New Analysis, Analysis. Finding Love in England's Most Famous Prison, Megan Clausen's novel, Insight, AI Scan Shows Henry VIII As He Would Look Today Like a Taxi Driver, Report, It Was a Farewell Which Followed a Great Deal of Upset. Despite Henry and Catherine being largely happy throughout their long marriage, although historians say Catherine tolerated his infidelity, the lack of a male heir became a problem that Henry could not let slide. The monarch, known to be superstitious, became convinced that Catherine's brief teenage marriage to his older brother Arthur just five months had been consummated. Catherine and Arthur tied the knot by proxy on May 19, 1499. He believed his union with the woman who was once betrothed to his sibling had displeased God and was the reason why she had not produced a son. Henry then had Catherine put on trial, where she was humiliated, and questioned about her sexual relationship with Arthur. She denied the allegations and insisted that she was the rightful queen. But the ship had sailed for Henry, who now had his hopes set on tying the knot with Anne. Eventually, their marriage of 24 years was annulled. Following Catherine's death, an autopsy revealed that her heart had turned black which is now thought to have been caused by heart disease but at the time, Henry's new queen Anne was accused of poisoning her predecessor. Linda Porter's 2007 book Mary Tudor, The First Queen is available here.